Well, to respect everyone's time and because we have such an amazing topic today, um, we are gonna go ahead and get started. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our July Coffee and Conversation. I'm Deborah Hooper with Greensboro Chamber, and it's really wonderful to have all of you with us. We know this is such a busy, busy vacation time of the year, but I know we're going to have a terrific turnout this morning as well, because uh, we've got some really wonderful things to share with you. Um, the first thing that I want to do is to thank our presenting sponsor for 2021. All of our Coffee and Conversations uh, come help, and this morning, we are so privileged to have Dr. Arjuna Kumar, who is the Chief of Psychiatry and the Medical Director for Cone Health's Behavioral Medicine Service Line. And Dr. Kumar is, um, I, she is a personal friend of mine and um, a professional colleague as well. And I am so glad that she is here, excited about what she's gonna share about a new behavioral health center in our community. So Dr. Kumar, I'm going to turn it over to you. Thank you, Deborah. It's great being here, you know, and Cohen Health loves to sponsor events. And this is really close to the heart of Cohen Health because we're talking about our businesses and communities coming together, which is so essential for our community. You know, at Cohen Health, our promise has always been, you know, we're right here with you. Uh, for me, my passion's always been behavioral health. Uh, like Deborah said, I've been doing this. I've been with Cohen Health for about 11, 12 years. And, you know, we started from a small setup to what we are today, really helping people access uh, resources and the help they need. And so, you know, it's a pleasure to be here to kind of talk about it. Uh, this was one of my dreams. So, you know, we just started Guilford County uh, Behavioral Health Center. You know, this was partners coming together, uh, whether it's our LME, which is, you know, uh, Sand Hills, which provides the dollars from the state. It's Guilford County and Cohen Health all coming together to help better the community, provide resources, have this one-stop shop, no wrong door, one place people can come to get help. Uh, I think it's also important to remember that we didn't have anything like this in North Carolina. There are hardly any in the country. And part of it is being able to provide the care people need. So it doesn't matter what services you need. You walk in, uh, you're you know, at the reception, people help guide you, whether it's inpatient services, outpatient services, crisis. And that's the important part that people shouldn't have to struggle with mental illness or anything, even if it's anxiety, if they need help and have that stigma. So having a stigma-free environment where people can walk in and get the help they need. Uh, so let me tell you a little about the Guilford County Behavioral Health Center. We have uh, a lot of different services. So when you walk in, you have an urgent care, which is open 24-7. It's for children and adolescents, adults, geriatric, anyone can walk through that door to get help. Based on your needs there at the front, they make a decision whether you need to be there for 23 hours to maybe you have, need some medications and you know you want to be stabilized or we have a 16 bedded facility based crisis where someone thinks they need two or three days to get the help they need. Uh, the environment is it's welcoming. Uh, it's totally, it's all about compassion, making sure, you know, you're treated with respect and dignity. It doesn't matter how many times you show up for help, you know, part of us as a community has to be able to provide that help in a way where, you know, we feel that we empower the person who's coming to get the help they need. On our second floor, we have what's called a pure living room. That's a great model. That means I, if I want to come in and I need some help, but I really don't want to see a psychiatrist or a therapist, I can walk in there, meet people who themselves are in recovery, who have classes, wellness programs. It's open 12 hours a day. You can walk in, attend some groups. Hey, I need some help with A, B, and C. You have people who themselves are in recovery from mental illness or addiction who are there to provide that support. And you don't feel that you're being labeled or you have to see someone if you don't feel like. 
Also our outpatient services, we have what's called the partial hospitalization program. So if you're struggling, but you want to stay home, or we feel we can keep you stable in the community, you have a program which is five days a week, you come in, you attend for two, you know, five hours, we just got licensed for it. Uh, there's an intensive outpatient program, which is three days a week, there's an addiction program, we have therapists, we have psychiatrists, we have so we have a whole array of services to help customize the needs people need. Uh, so, you know, empathy is what I think is really important in healthcare, especially in behavioral health. There's no stigma, no wrong door. You know, I keep emphasizing that because I want people to have the ability to get the help when they feel they need the help. And lastly, my biggest thing, which has been my, uh, uh, I would say, my struggle uh, as a physician is that we have physical and mental health separate. My thing is that patients are one. There's no physical health or any healthcare without mental health. And the reverse is true. There's no mental health without making sure you look at the physical health parts of it. So this is a place where it's holistic care, total patient care. We're providing the physical health needs of our patients. We're making sure they're doing well. So, you know, this is a dream come true. So, you know, I, I can't say more about, you know, how great this place is. And thank you for having me over to talk about this. Oh, Dr. Kumar, thank you so much for your leadership. You know, especially in this particular area that's so important to our community. Um, so many folks have needed this type of uh, care that would be offered at, as you said, one facility. And this dream has come true for our community. So thank you for your leadership. It has made all the difference. So thank we're you. we're fortunate that you are here in our community. So thank you. Um, I also want to thank our Circle of Champions partners who help make programming um, like this and other programming of the Chamber possible throughout the year. Our platinum uh, champions are a legacy federal credit union, Cone Health, Lincoln Financial Group, Truist, Truliant Federal Credit Union, and VF Corporation. A, our gold champion is Navant Health, and our silver champions are Kelly Office Solutions, Ralph Lauren, Staunton Capital, and Wake Forest Baptist Health. Um, the good news is that Holly has already um, put something in the chat room that may be of interest to everyone as well. We're going to have a digital drawing. So if you'd like to text the word PERK to 55678 and fill out that registration, we're going to have a, a giveaway this morning, a $25 gift certificate uh, for one of our Greensboro restaurants as we still continue to go about supporting our local restaurants and uh, just making sure that we all are able to take advantage of the wonderful uh, restaurant offerings that we have in our community. So as I also promised, um, we have a fantastic panel uh, this morning that is going to talk about the art scene in Greensboro. And um, to, to moderate that panel, one of my colleagues, Ainsley Johnston, who is our event manager, Ainsley's background and experience in the arts uh, scene and community is vast. And so she is the perfect moderator this morning. So Ainsley, take it away. Thank you so much, Deborah. And um, we will make sure that we just jump right into this, but I was struck, we, we get to hear about a different piece of Cone Health and the great work that they're doing every month. And hearing specifically from Dr. Kumar, you know, it, it hit me. She was talking about empathy in healthcare, and empathy is such an important piece of art and what it brings to a community. Um, talking about mental and physical health care together. Well, business and the arts go together. It's these things that sometimes we um, wouldn't see as going hand in hand and having a role with one another, but I think that they are so important to go in tandem. So I'm very excited that we get to talk uh, to a couple of our arts leaders, just three among the many, many uh, people who are, are 
making sure that the arts are vibrant in our community, but I want to introduce them to you. Uh, today we have Chris Williams, who is the executive director of the Eastern Music Festival, Amy Grossman, who is the president and CEO of the North Carolina Folk Festival, and Katina Bergevin, who is the director of development for Arts Greensboro, our local arts council. So thank you all so much uh, for joining us today. So we're going to talk about um, kind of what people can get engaged in. You know, we're, we've all been kind of hunkered down. Um, there was a lot going on over the past year, and now we have the arts coming back vibrant. There are things to see, there are things to support, and so we want to lift those up. So I'm going to start with you, Chris, because you are in the middle of something that we can actually uh, do right now. So for those who don't know, can you tell us what EMF is? Sure. Happy to. Eastern Music Festival, uh, we are celebrating our 60th anniversary this summer. For 60 years, we have brought young classical musicians from around the world to Greensboro uh, to study for five or six weeks uh, with a professional faculty that also comes from all around the globe. Uh, we are at the midpoint of our summer season. So we have uh, been on campus for three weeks at Guilford College and we have three weeks to go. So we're halfway through. Um, in a normal summer, we would bring about 265 young artists together. This summer, we've trimmed the numbers slightly to 190. Uh, we're producing about 35 live concerts this summer. We produced two last night in partnership with Greensboro Opera and Temple Emmanuel. They had two sold out shows. Uh, and at this very moment, we have a trombone choir performing down in Columbus, Georgia for uh, an international trombone conference. So we are Greensboro based, but making an impact all around, uh, all around the country. That's awesome. Well, can you tell people, um, you know, just to get to the, the meat of it first, yeah. how they can find out because I understand we've got two more weeks of concerts we have, that people we have can take two and a half weeks of, of performing left. Uh, EasternMusicFestival.org is our website. The entire festival calendar is listed there. Uh, the News and Record and other media outlets have also done a great job of publicizing and listing our concerts. So we're, we're posted. Um, tickets are available through that same website if anyone would like to purchase a ticket. There are free programs throughout the summer, student recitals and, and student piano recitals and other projects, and there are lots of ticketed programs left. So we perform, um, this summer we're performing at least six days a week, sometimes seven. So non there is no excuse not to see- Nonstop the through the, end of the month, that's right. that's right. Well, and Chris, I know that um, COVID hit EMF just like so many of our performing arts, and I know we will hear that from from Amy and Katina as well. But um, I understand that y'all are, are back stronger than ever. It sounds like it with the number of performances. We, we, um, we were hit hard last summer, uh, made the decision last March to um, suspend all live and in-person programming. So what we did is we taught online and we were able to teach hundred young people and engage 40 uh, faculty members and do workshops and seminars and classes and coaching online through last summer. Uh, but this summer, thanks to some really, really strong um, medical leadership from members of our board and from here in the community, we made the decision to go back to live programming and our students and faculty, um, they jumped right in. They were not uh, shy. Once, once we built our plan working with Guilford College and Guilford Public Health uh, Greensboro Public Health, the state, everybody along the way, um, they jumped right in. So we are almost at full capacity. We made a few adjustments. Uh, we weren't able to bring the international students, for instance. Uh, so all of our students are from the United States this year or already living in the United States from abroad and enrolled in colleges here. So um, we have kids from 40 states this year and eight foreign countries. Normally we would have students from 18 or 20 foreign countries as well. Yeah. That's uh, awesome. It, it feels really good to be back in business, to hear live music on a stage is a wonderful thing. 
you're you are telling me um <laughs> well could katina and amy i want to switch kind of over to y'all because yes i mean it, it is fantastic to hear live music live performances on a stage and um hearing about emf switching to virtual programming last year i mean amy kudos to you and your team if any of y'all got a chance to see the virtual version of the North Carolina Folk Festival last year. It, it was spectacular. It was highly produced. It showcased all over our wonderful city. But I just wonder um, if y'all could talk about, you know, how your organizations were affected by COVID or kind of how y'all have been adapting over the past year. Katina, you want me to go? <laughs> yeah, Amy, why don't you go? <laughs> Um, yeah, thank you for that, Ainsley. And um, yeah, I definitely encourage you go to YouTube and look for NC Folk Festival and you can still see that virtual concert series that we that we produced last year. Um, you know, just like everyone in the arts and the hospitality industry, you know, it was a very sudden blow last year. I'm not going to rehash all of that. You've heard us talk about, if not us personally, I'm sure you, you've all heard a lot about that. And you know, like Chris, I think there's a lot of relief for us um, to be able to go back in person. We were able to take advantage of um, not only, you know, several grant opportunities and relief funding at the federal, state, county level, which kept our organization afloat. You know, when the very nature of what you do is convene large mass gatherings of people and you're suddenly not allowed to do that, it's very hard to make a case for people supporting you and donating to you, which is what we rely on that contributed revenue. But I will, one thing I will say is that this has got given us an opportunity to get creative, whether it was through the virtual concert series that we did last year, but also I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump on the bandwagon here and give another shout out to Cone Health um, because they supported us um, during that time with a new virtual program that we launched just this spring. Um, it's the Not Your Average Folk Contest. So it was a contest that North Carolina performers, independent by that, it means they're not signed to some major record deal, uh, were able to participate and compete. It's adjudicated. We're actually still in the midst of this contest right now. Um, open uh, public voting, kind of American Idol style, uh, with popular voting to determine the winner of that um, and that the, the winner will uh, have an opportunity to perform live at the festival this year. I'll be sure to put the link to that voting um, portal uh, in the chat when I'm done talking. Um, but um, again, thanks to Cone Health, you know, it was just a really creative way to match what we could provide um, artistically with Cone Health's messaging about doing things safely from home. So that was that was just a really great creative way to collaborate with some other folks in uh, in the community. Uh, but additionally, like like Chris said, you know, it's we have had to make some uh, you know adjustments to what we're going to do this year with the festival. It'll look very much the same to the public. I think more of the changes are behind the scenes. Um, and uh, it is a very compressed timeline for us because we couldn't make that official decision until May, until the governor, uh, you know, uh, you know, announced his executive order 215, and that really opened things up for us to be able to say we are 100% in with an in-person festival. So we're going to have a lot of announcements coming out soon. We encourage people to engage, volunteer if you're comfortable. We are looking for volunteers, and um, of course you know, that, that support from our community has really propelled us to be able to do what we're going to be able to do again this year. And at the same time, plan for beyond 21. Yeah, I'll, um, I'll quickly add to that, you know, the word pivot was used and reused during, uh, you know, the pandemic, but really the arts, they innovated is what they did. And they did an amazing job. EMF and uh, the Folk Festival are wonderful examples. Uh, it was a crazy year for many of us and the arts suffered terribly. I mean, nobody was prepared for this. Um, and so Arts Greensboro, you know, we went into you know, action mode 
uh, and to try to see what it was that we could do immediately. And so the first thing we did, and this goes to show you how important the arts are to this community. I mean, we started an artist relief fund, which was one of only three in the state at the time. And this was March of 2020. And we thought, you know, we'll raise 10, 25,000 for those artists that are out of work. You know, those big artists that all of a sudden, you know, venues were closed, events were canceled. And our community raised 100,000, uh, which was, you know, so impressive and wonderful. And all of that money went out to artists in need. Um, Amy mentioned the, the CARES funding and, you know, we advocated for that. That was an important part. I mean, the arts are an important part of this community, not just in terms of for the citizens, but, you know, we always talk about it and people are proud of the arts here. You know, it's part of who we are. It's part of our DNA. And uh, it's so amazing to hear live music again. And I just wanted to say, you know, we're not out of the woods. And, um, and, and what, I would, what I would really um, plead for is that, you know, get out there, participate, buy tickets. Um, you know, if you buy gifts for your employees at the holidays, buy them tickets, you know, or share an experience with your family and friends. Get out, you know, go to the parks, listen to the music, get out to you know, see some visual art, try some poetry if you've never done it. You know, the arts really need our support um, and, um, and, and it's up to us to do that. So, so true, Katina. And, and uh, you know, Chris has already told us, we have two weeks of, of opportunities, like six days a week to, to put your money where your mouth is, put your time where your mouth is right this minute. Chris, you unmuted, did you have? No, I, I hit the button, I'm sorry. <laughs> just checking. Well, I wanna go back, Amy, to something that you just said. First of all, to, to be able to say, hey, y'all can go and watch all of technically last year's festival, last year's concert series. Like what a gift and what a thing we can all uh, do right now. And Katina, I love, you know, the, your concept, like we didn't pivot, the arts innovated. Um, so we are, we, you know, it's like American Idol, like that whole piece of Not Your Average Folk, it's our own American Idol piece right now. So we all need to go and vote. But Amy, will you go back and talk a little bit about, you said y'all are gonna need volunteers again. And I know that's a big piece of your festival. I know it's a big thing we do in the community. I see a couple people on here today that I know are volunteers extraordinaire um, for the festival since, since it has been with us. So can you talk a little bit about that? Sure, yeah, one of them I see right here on my screen is Wayne Young, so hi, Wayne. <laughs> Um, anyway, yeah, you know, since the festival first came uh, here to Greensboro, we're free admission, as you all know, um, we rely very much on the support of volunteers in a, sorry, I have a pet that is, uh, you know, yes, I see you. Um, <laughs> um, welcome to Zoom. This has been the past 18 months, right? Um, so, uh, sorry, distracted me for a second. Um, so we rely on the support of volunteers in a variety of, of ways. You know, in the past, we have recruited around a thousand volunteers uh, for the festival who have filled about, it's been between 1500 and 1800 shifts. So we, we're very fortunate that we have a lot of people who sign up for more than one shift. Uh, so we're, we're still looking for volunteers this year. There will be ways for people to participate in, a, in an outdoor setting. There will be a couple of roles um, that are probably in more confined spaces, you know, or in, in contact with some of the artists. And with some of them, we are gonna have a few more restrictions or, or expectations about vaccinations. But, you know, for the general public, you know, it's, you know, we're, we're just, it's gonna be outdoors. It's gonna be distance. It's gonna be great. We really, we just really need people's support and they can go to our website uh, and find out how to, how to sign up to do that. That's awesome. Cause that was a, that was a question that I had thinking, I was excited that everything was gonna be back, but you know, how can you get involved and, and how can you help? Um, Katina, I want to ask you a quick question because we, we've been talking about um, looking forward. You know, Amy was talking about 
this year's festival, but then looking ahead to the future festivals. And I know that's one thing that you have talked about uh, with me in particular, but, but throughout the community about Arts Greensboro's role looking forward and, um, and kind of how y'all can provide help and, and create future sustainability for all of these arts organizations that have so bravely innovated, but you know, we wanna be prepped and ready for whatever the future brings. Uh, yeah, um, you know, I, I don't think any of us, I mean, the arts are, they're, they're a fragile uh, sector as it is. You know, they rely on the generosity of people who love the arts and who know the importance of it. Um, and so that's our job is to really help make sure that that always stays in the forefront. Um, and so, uh, you know, this year, I, as I mentioned, we're not out of the water. And so, as you know, there are American Rescue Plan Act of 2021, and there's funds here um, in the city and county that Arch Greensboro is advocating for a portion of that to come to the arts. Um, because we still need to recover. And, and, and more than that, uh, you know, really looking at our business model and really looking at ways that we can sustain the arts so that future generations can continue to enjoy it. And so that's been our big piece right now. We're really working hard on, on that and trying to get a portion of it. Um, we know that you know uh, local government has been really sympathetic to the arts. They understand the importance of it. They understand you know it's something we're really proud of in this city. And so we're really hoping that they you know will be able to um, you know listen to us and and really you know show their support through through additional additional funding. Um, you know certainly Arts Greensboro's always you know we raise money and we give it out. That's basically what we do, and we service the arts organizations as best we can. And you know as Chris said, he's been around sixty years. We've been around sixty years. You know we we're working right along with you and. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we always say, first and foremost, you need to experience the arts. You need to be there and listen and share it. It's, it's all about a shared experience. Um, keep up on what's happening. I'm going to put our uh, website um, in the chat. You know, we uh, do an, a monthly newsletter. And something I'd love to just mention, um, so, you know, our pitch last year was arch through it all because the arts never went away. I mean, they were still there uh, and they were still doing amazing things and amazing work. Um, and we put a music video together with local artists. Um, it's on our web, it's on our uh, web page. Uh, it's called Through It All. And Kate Toby, J uh, Jay Timber, Gerald Van, uh, Brandon Davis came together, original song, lyrics, and the video that goes with it our video images that were given to us or submitted to us through the community. What were they doing during the COVID, during last year's uh, crazy time to sort of, you know, keep themselves going. And it's, you know, people, you know, creating with their, their kids, uh, you know, having fun with their pets, doing yoga on their back porch, cooking. Um, it's really, it's one of those videos that it brings tears to your eyes. And I think it brings us hope for what these, you know, for what we need to look forward to this year. And the arts are gonna be, you know, kicking it. And Katina, I know that um, thinking about moving forward and, and going to see artistic endeavors, um, I understand that that the, the city's new um, arts and culture office has a, a great project going. I know you and Arts Greensboro are involved. I know our marketing director, Megan Mabry, uh, has been kind of in the loop on it. Can you tell people about what, what we're dreaming of, what's, what's cooking at the city level? Sure, yeah, we're working with Creative Greensboro. You know, our mission's the same. And so we uh, partner together. I mean, we're there to support the arts. And so, uh, and uh, the uh, cultural arts master plan that was brought up and uh, approved, what, about almost three years ago now, has a portion in there about, you know, our role in promoting the arts, number one, um, helping grow audiences, expanding audiences, um, and so we are working on a project, an arts and event, an uh, arts and culture events calendar. That's really, really a lot more than what's been done in the past. It may, it will go, it may go triad wide. Um, it will have, um, 
you know, venue directory, artist directory. It will sync with other uh, <laughs> calendars in the region. So, you know, you only need to enter your event in and it can sync to other ones, which has always been a struggle. It's very difficult to constantly have to do that. Um, so we're really excited about it and working with Ryan Deal at the city and with our, we have a task force, which Megan is part of, to really find out what it is, first of all, that the arts organizations need from us and how can we serve that best? And then really what will help bring attention and promotion to our city um, of the amazing arts and culture that we have in this region. And so hopefully that's gonna come out in towards the end of the year, beginning of next year. We're doing a lot of the uh, due diligence beforehand, but we're, we're really excited. And so we will be promoting that as soon as it's ready. Well, as someone who um, has spent a lot of time in her professional career inputting different show dates into about 50 different calendars and you know surrounding areas websites, it is thrilling. And I think for all of us as, as potential patrons to have one central place we can go, then none of you have an excuse why, why you're not going to see the arts. There will be plenty of it and you will know where it is. Um, so I just wanted, before we uh, hop into some networking, I just wanna thank each of y'all for being with us and just check to see if there is anyone uh, who has any specific questions. I know usually when it comes to volunteering and the arts, we uh, sometimes will have questions out there. Anyone with a binding question you need answered? <laughs> Thank you, Luann, for posting our calendar as well. It is one of the biggest challenges in the world to keep all of these calendars sorted. And I, I had one tiny clarification. Um, I've not been around 60 years. I'm getting very, very close but uh, the festival has been around 60 years. I mean, we didn't think you were a day over 25, so <laughs> we knew what you meant. Well, thank y'all so much uh, for being here. Everyone, you know, you make sure that you are downloading the chat. You see calendars and websites in there. I know that Amy, Chris, Katina, um, Laura Way, also with Arts Greensboro, any of these people are here to answer your questions and to help plug you in and get you involved. Uh, so I'm going to toss it over to Tracy now. Thank you, Ainsley, and thank you to all of our speakers today. Um, special thank you again to our sponsor, Cone Health, for presenting our Coffee and Conversation series for the entire year. Uh, we are going to move into some networking, but before we get started, um, we would love for you guys to be the first to hear about a new program that will roll out to the press and to all of our membership on Monday of next week. Um, so 86% of the Chamber's members are small businesses, and we know that we have been through quite a trying time. A lot of our small businesses have seen economic hardships throughout the last year, um, whether it be related to the pandemic um, or not. And so the Chamber of Commerce is utilizing our Chamber Foundation to set up a pay it forward fund. And it's exactly what it sounds like. Um, so if you or your organization are interested in providing funds um, that would go towards members um, and small businesses that are having difficulty paying their memberships or renewing um, for the current year and accessing all of those chamber resources, um, you can actually contribute to that fund. So Holly has popped that link in the chat. That's the only way to get to it right now because it goes live early next week. So if you have that link, you can actually go out and check out what that page looks like. Um, it starts as low as $25 to make a contribution to that. Um, and there are sponsorship levels um, if folks are interested in taking advantage of that as well. Um, it, this will provide our nonprofits um, and our small businesses with an opportunity to apply for those funds. We have a process that we will go through to determine how those are distributed, but that will give them much needed resources 
access to marketing opportunities um, to help our businesses stay on their feet and continue to grow. Um, and a special thank you to Novant Health for coming on board with us as we were building this program, being our pilot to start out and be our first funder. Um, Novant has a strong commitment to community um, and to the Guilford County community. If you are interested in learning more about them, you can look at Novant Health org, but Novant will be sponsoring anywhere between two and four of those local businesses for an entire year. So we thank them very much. We appreciate their early support of the program. So moving on into networking, this is our portion where you have the opportunity to share things that are going on within your businesses. Um, we ask that you um, come on um, on camera, um, we'd love to see your faces. Um, we will give you the opportunity to tell us a little bit about who you are. This is the free networking, free advertisement, take advantage of it. Um, we ask that you speak for about 30 seconds and just share who you are. Um, don't forget, we have the digital drawing, text PERK to 55678. We will do that around the 945 mark. Um, so make sure you get in that. And who's gonna go first? Either use the raise hand feature, just pop off mute and feel free to start talking to us, or you can stick that in the chat and we'll keep an eye on it. So who's first today? I'll go first. Thank you. Good, good morning. Hi, Tracy. Great program, by the way. I'm looking forward to um, getting back to um, the festival on September 10th, which is my birthday. So that'll be a great way to spend it. Yes, it will. Um, anyway, I'm not Kim Hilton. Uh, I'm John Wing. <laughs> I got her um computer by default when mine crashed a few weeks ago she's a colleague of mine at uh, the j-e-r-h-r group in greensboro i'm the business development manager and we've been probably a chamber member for at least 20 years i think um we are a full service hr consulting uh and human capital firm based in greensboro we have offices in um in raleigh um in new york manhattan uh, and also in Des Moines, Iowa. So we're very much a, a national uh, entity now. And we work with 30 plus uh, affiliates, consultants that do the majority of the work for us. But again, we're, we're kind of sequestered uh, as a small core group in Greensboro and have been for, for quite some time. But anyway, just enjoy these connections every month. And uh, I recognize a few people on here. I, I know who Ann. Streck and, and John Bennett and so forth and great people at the chamber. So thank you for continuing to do this and uh, thank you for all the sponsors as well. Thank you, John. Who's next? Uh, I'll jump in. Uh, I'm Bill O'Shea. I'm with uh, WGHP Channel 8 uh, here in the triad. Um, I want to thank all of the uh, the folks and speakers today for for speaking. We have uh, we worked last year. Uh, we do a holiday concert series every year uh, to help support uh, the uh, Salvation Army and their work and uh, and their food drive during the holiday season. Um, and it was a, it was a huge challenge, and so many uh, musicians stepped up to to help out and do a virtual concert series. Uh, because we couldn't go out, normally we would go out with the symphony orchestra and have events at the Greensboro Coliseum and the Winston Coliseum, uh, and that wasn't uh, possible last year. But so many great musicians stepped up and, and helped out, uh, and we were able to put on a, a great virtual uh, concert series uh, and help uh, raise a, you know, a significant amount of money that helped the Salvation Army uh, uh, you know, stock their shelves for uh, and their food banks for up to six months, and without the without the help of the arts, that doesn't take place. Thank you, Bill. Who's next? Oh, hey. I'll just, uh, since we've been talking about arts today, I'm from the Greensboro History Museum and just let everyone know we have a wonderful exhibit right now called Pieces of Now, yeah. Murals, Mass, Community Stories and Conversations. And we're really highlighting a lot of the arts that have been produced over the past year, especially 
during the time of protests. We have the uh, some of the murals that were produced downtown, as well as music and poetry and verbal art. And really, it's the exhibit is the story people people's own stories uh, about now and the times we're, we're living in. And uh, but it's a wonderful opportunity uh, to to get a feeling for what the last year has been like and art as protest, art as expression, art as a place that, that art as something that brings people together and we've created that space. And we also have a great museum shop here um, if you're looking for local Greensboro stuff. Carol, that exhibit is fantastic. Do you know how long that's going to be there? Or is there still conversation around Yes, we've extended it. We wanted to keep it up at least through Folk Festival. <laughs> and uh, so September 19th is the last date because then we have to move on to uh, uh, the project that was supposed to be up when we said, you know what, let's, we, we have to do something to share with the community um, how people in the community responded through the arts to deal with some of what has been going on in our lives. Thank you. Thank you. So go and see it. It's amazing. All right, who's next? I'll go next. I'm Wayne Young. I am a residential real estate broker with Alan Tate and uh, have the pleasure of uh, volunteering as one of the chamber ambassadors, as well as one of the team captains with the Folk Festival this year. And I just want to encourage you all um, certainly, if you haven't been to the Folk Festival to go this year to enjoy all of the arts going, all of the music and dancing and everything that goes on at, at the Folk Festival. But I also want to encourage you to volunteer because uh, it is fun. Uh, frankly, it's, it's just a good time. Uh, and there's so many different opportunities to volunteer there from swilling beer to, uh, to recording the artists to... Uh, doing all kinds of things. So I wanna encourage you to take part in that. And uh, uh, certainly if you need any residential real estate advice, uh, call Wayne Young at Allen Tate. Thanks everybody. Thanks Wayne. We're glad you're back. We know when you're out of town and we miss you. Thank you. Hi, um, can I go next? Yes. Um, I'm Marion Ragsdale and I work for Habitat for Humanity of Greensboro, um, where Wayne also is an incredible amazing volunteers. He is our incoming board chair. I don't know how you have time to sell real estate, Wayne. I really don't, um, but we're glad that you do. Um, I just wanted to let everybody know that Habitat is thrilled to announce that we are finally able to welcome back volunteers just as all of the arts organizations are. So if you are interested in volunteering to help on our build sites, we have 11 houses that we'll be completing within the next um, seven to eight months and we need lots of volunteers. So I will post on here the email of the young lady who manages all of our volunteers or you can certainly go to Habitat Greensboro and navigate that way. Um, also I wanna put a plug in for our two restores. One is on the corner of Cornwallis and Lawndale and the other one is our uh, flagship store on Gate City Boulevard. And uh, we are continuing to receive brand new furniture from a national retailer who has a lot of their furniture photographed locally in High Point, and then they give us the furniture to sell. Um, so whether you want used uh, furniture that you can paint and fix up, or you're looking for some new things, including great patio lawn furniture, we continue to get a lot of that in. And also if you're still cleaning out and need us to come by and pick up your used appliances or furniture, we're more than happy to do that for free. Um, and you can find all that information on our website at habitatgreensboro.org. Thank you. And good morning. Thank you. And that was great information. That's something that I didn't know um, that there was this new furniture there as well. One thing I will say about volunteering with Habitat for Humanity, you do not need to have skills coming into that volunteer experience. I will say that myself. Um, I've painted doors there and that's about all I really probably should be doing. <laughs> when it comes to constructing a home but yeah don't let that hold you back they will absolutely find something that you can do in a way that you can pitch in so you do not need to have a certain skill set to go and volunteer thanks tracy and thanks for volunteering oh absolutely good morning i will jump in i'll start by saying 
Hi, Joyce. I haven't seen your face in years. It is so good to see you. Um, I am here representing the Junior League of Greensboro as the president. Our leadership changes over each year, so I am honored to be the president for this year and looking forward to all the work that we're doing. We are happily accepting new members all the time, and we are developing the potential of women and supporting our community and promoting volunteerism. And so we just love to make community, community connections. It's great to be on these coffees and conversations and to see faces and to learn about what's going on in Greensboro. And we want to be a part of everything and do our best to support all of the great work that's done here. So thank you for having me. And I look forward to maybe seeing you all in person one day. Yes, definitely seeing us in person soon. Um, we do have our winner of our digital drawing and that is Joanne Gallo. And so we will reach out um, to award the gift card. Who else would like to share? Uh, I'll go next. Uh, my name is Craig Copeland. I'm with the North Carolina Folk Festival. Uh, I am all things sponsorship and fundraising is probably the best way to describe it. Uh, came on a few months before the pandemic, so I'm looking forward to the festival probably more than anybody here. Um, Virtual concert series was a great experience and a good way to uh, get involved, but uh, really looking forward to, like everybody else, live music, entertainment. I I'm also looking forward to getting more involved in Guilford County, Greensboro area. Really been looking forward to meeting people in person and also find out where I can also volunteer my time and learn more about the community. So I'm glad to be here. Thank you, Trey. Welcome. Thank you. Who's next? Giovanna, how's it going over in Credit Union land? Oh, it's going great. I was actually unmuted and then I was like, okay, I think I can go now. <laughs> it's, good. it's good. <laughs> How are you? Good. How's everyone? Uh, well, hi, my name is Giovanna Simonis. I am uh, a uh, employee here at Piedmont Advantage Credit Union. Uh, we are basically uh, a full service financial institution. And my role is to connect uh, people in our community to our products and services, ranging from deposits, uh, lending and investment. So if you happen to be tired of your financial in institution or you know someone that is, um, just send them over our way. We are located on Battleground, uh, right where the um, Biscuitville, Chick-fil-A area, uh, that shopping center. So um, if you want to come and visit us and check it out, it's a really neat space, uh, very modern. So yeah, we would love to have you guys. So just come over and see the space for yourself. And then if you want, are looking for a new financial experience, we got gotcha. you. <laughs> awesome, thank you. Who's next? Okay, well, we have a few things we need to tell you before we go, so we'll do that. If anybody's gathering that last bit of courage to get a free opportunity to share about your company. Um, August, we have no coffee and conversation. Ainsley, why do we not have coffee and conversation in August? Because we have the state of our community in person. Yes, so we do. So uh, state of our community is back. Uh, it is in person. It is with our friends at the Corey Convention Center. It will be August 25th, so it's always that last Wednesday in August. Um, we are working diligently on, you know, as, as we went into the pandemic, we had like four different versions of every event. Then we kind of, we knew we were digital. Now coming out of the pandemic, we've got about four different versions of every event, but we do know that we will be in person. We are working on some spectacular content to kind of talk about um, what is going on in our community. In particular, we are looking at talent and talent acquisition, things like our, our Boomerang Greensboro program, bringing um, you know, we're, again, everyone has to talk about Wayne. If you didn't bring up Wayne in your speech, what's going on in your life? Wayne just got back 
from bringing his son back from the West Coast. So his son is a new boomerang coming back to our community. So it's that sort of, uh, of piece that, that we are working on as your Greensboro Chamber of Commerce, uh, highlighting and continuing to build on the good works that we are doing and our community is doing uh, to bring in and keep talent in our community. Yes, so the registration link is in the chat. This event is going fast. Um, before we even knew what the topic was, people had bought their tables and they just wanted to come and see everyone else. Um, <clears throat> kudos to the team for working very hard with Corey around protocols. Um, so we are following COVID protocols. You'll see some interesting things there around table service and how things are set and how things are handled. So please join us. We look forward to seeing the community kind of back in a big way um, on August 25th. We also have golf coming up on September 20th. So if you are a golfer, let us know. And then we will have our Impact Leadership Conference on October 27th. Um, heads up to keep an eye on the news and on the press for the announcement of our speaker um, for this event, one of my personal favorites. Um, they're holding me back and keeping me from fangirling over her, but we know everyone will be excited when they find out who that is. Anyone else want to give a quick commercial before we go? Yeah, I'll jump in. Um, I'm Skylar Perkins. I'm with the Greensboro Swarm basketball team, and uh, we have not been able to have a home game here in Greensboro in, since February of 2020. So uh, we had to miss out on the 2020-2021 season, but we are back uh, coming in November. Uh, it looks like our first game will be November 5th, and that's a Friday. So if you are uh, unfamiliar with the Swarm and looking to uh, make it out to a game and see what it's all about, uh, feel free to reach out to me via email. I'll drop that in the chat real quick. Um, but it's a really good time. I know some people in here have been to the game. Uh, they can let you know. It's a small venue, but it's pro basketball. And we often have a bunch or at least a few Hornets players uh, down playing with us. So thank you guys for having me this morning. Thank you, Skylar. And this is the fifth anniversary celebration year, right? Yes, it is. So five years in Greensboro, it's hard to believe. Um, and we ha actually do have um, a fifth year anniversary little mini plan to fit everybody's schedule. It's five games um, plus one extra. So when our full schedule gets released, you'll get to pick that extra game. But we do have five of our best games already selected for that. And uh, it's, you know, it's a good way to uh, get out and enjoy some uh, live sports. Awesome. And Scala, make sure you send us any kind of info to send out to the membership. We'll definitely share that. We're looking forward to that anniversary celebration. And all I can say is go, go to those games. They are phenomenal. One of our favorite things to do in town. Anybody else? Hey, if not, have a wonderful Thursday. Have a wonderful weekend. We look forward to seeing you all soon.